because his own people weren't trying to receive. The book said he came among his own and his own received him not. But to many as received him, to them he gave the power. The word power means the right to become the sons of God. So the first thing, amen, Paul had to do, he had to dismiss some Jew that wasn't believing in what he was doing. Because what God want to do tonight, there's still some folk that not operate in belief, but they still call themselves believers. And even Jesus can do but a few miracles because of their unbelief. You might be a believer, but don't mean that you always believe in what we're trying to do tonight. And your belief, amen, can block what God's about to do if we don't have enough belief in the house that can bring God's move back in the house of God. So he says, when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the synagogue was a type of worship thing. They would set it up in a place to have church. Isn't that right? And watch what he said. That might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Am I right? Now watch this. And when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews in religious what? Followed Apostle Demon and Overseer Loretta. Oh, yeah, I ain't like that right there. Let me read that again. I don't think somebody heard me. I miss you right there. I think I missed some call it. They, they went up some people head. And when the congregation, not the pulpit, the congregation, was broken up. In other words, when God began to break up all the clicks that was going on. Oh, yeah, you ready for that right there? When God began to break up, amen, the stony ground and break up the hearts of the people that were sitting in the pool up here, then God was ready to bring a move. But the first thing God got to do, he had to break up the folly ground with the hearts of the pew people that he can bring a real move of God. He couldn't bring a move until he had to break up some things. And what God's about to do now, he's about to break up the folly ground. He's about to break up some click that's in the chat that he can bring a move of God. The reason why we ain't experienced God's move because it's been too much clicking folk in the house of God and that's why God can't move like he desired to move because it's too much click in the house. That's your neighbor said neighbor he's about to break up the folly ground. He's about to break up some things uh, so he can bring a move of God. That's your neighbor said before there's a break out it must be a break up. I don't think you hear me for real. Before God can break out, he got to break up some things. He got to break up these cliques. He got to break up the familiar ground. He got to break up the, from the, the relationship that you are connected to that God did not connect you to. Even in ministry, he got to break up the father ground. Touch your neighbor's a neighbor. He's about to break up some stuff here. Before he can bring a real move of God back in the church. The reason why he ain't been able to bring a move in the church. Because we got too many folk that clicked up to people. Amen. That don't want God to move. Touch your neighbor's and neighbor. He got to break it up today. Because God is ready to bring a supernatural move back in the house of God. I'm talking about a move that's going to affect generation to come. I ain't talking about a temporary move. That after we leave tonight. Come on. That the move of God stop. But this is the hour that we got to leave a legacy. Uh, this is the hour that when God moves in a place, uh, we got to maintain the move. We just can't come tonight uh, and come to revival. And after the revival is over, come on. Amen. The move of God stop now. This move of God got to hit generation to come because I stopped by to tell you that when God break up some things, uh, you're going to see the apostolic move of God come back to the house of God like you never saw it before. Touch your neighbor's a neighbor. He going to have to break up some stuff tonight. Night. Uh, it's too many hard hearts. Uh, it's too many people with different agendas. Uh, it's too many people with different things on their mind. And not allowing Christ's mind to be done. But such a neighbor's a neighbor. He's about to break up the folly ground in the house. I feel like giving God the praise in this place tonight. Come on and give God the praise. So the first thing he had to do, the book said, and when the congregation 
was broken up. Touch your neighbor and say, he's about to break up some stuff. The people that you've been hanging out with, he's about to break up their relationship. Because they don't have purpose on their life. Anything that God don't have purpose on, he ain't going to stay in it. If God don't have purpose in your ministry, he ain't going to come in. Oh, y'all ain't liking that right there. When God purpose ain't only thing, he ain't going to stay there. Let's go back to this right here. So they broke up. Oh, my God, broke up. They broke up. Broke up. Broke up different clicks. Broke up different photographs. You have to break that barrier. Break that mindset. Break that religious mindset. That, 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 that. He has to break up the way you've been doing stuff. To break up the, the same routine, the same religion. Religion is the same practice. Just doing the same old thing and getting the same old results. This is the hour God got to change the methods of the way we've been doing things. If we're going to have God to really move. We, we just come to church and just come to just the same old way. But I'll stop by to tell you, when God breaks that mindset, you're going to see a different move of God take place. Somebody says it's going to be different. Now watch what he says. Somebody say, watch what he say here. They followed Paul and Barnabas. Now, Paul, we find here, was a pioneer. You can be sit down. Paul was a pioneer. And when Paul got converted, the other apostle went to receive him. Because he wasn't one of the original 12 when the Lord called them. See, they was called, but Paul was chosen. Because, see, y'all ready for that? Paul, amen, had a, a real encounter. They walked with him, so they didn't have to have no encounter. And that's why it's hard, come on somebody, when you don't grow up in church uh, and then somebody come right off the tree corner and they outrun you. You've been in church for 20, 30 years and they know more Bible than you got and you done been to every school, you done got every degree, but yet still, hey amen, you were not chosen. You was called, many are called, but few are chosen. And it's the chosen for that God going to use in this hour. And that's why he told Ananias, he said, go your way for Paul is my chosen vessel that shall bat my name before the Gentile and when you're chosen sometime you're going to be different than other folk. Now some folk ain't going to receive you when God have chose you. Many folk been called to do so but we've been chosen to take this ministry to a whole different dimension. Let me get, let me get back in here because I see that I'm going to get through it in a minute. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get through it. If, you, if I can get a little more bass, that's all. I just, I just need to hear myself so I won't strain tonight. Now watch what he said, Shaniqua. He said he followed Paul and Bonham. Now, you have to understand that Bonham's name represents son of encouragement. So, so, so Bonham always look for people that he can encourage. But Barnabas was not a warrior. Paul was. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. He looked for people that he can be drawn to to encourage them to stay with it. You know why, amen, we, we can't, amen, we can't win this battle because we got too many folk every time attack hit them. We got to encourage them to get back to prayer, to get back to church. You don't understand that many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of all of them. We got to understand that anytime God anoints your life, you're going to have to, you're going to go through some stuff. But every time you go through, you can't shut down. You can't throw in the towel. God got to know that he can trust what he invests in. If God can't trust you, he can't use you. Everybody want to be anointed, but they don't want to go through nothing. The anointing going to cause a price. You going to have to go through something if God going to anoint you in this season. That's your neighbor say You going to have to go through some things if God's going to anoint you in this season. I feel the Holy Ghost. Let me help her right here, Shaniko. Give me a gift, son. I ain't gonna rush. Sit down. Sit down. 
I ain't gonna rush about it because I got to I got to lay a foundation. Paul was a foundation layer. Paul knew how to orchestrate and structure a strong church. One of the dangers that we face is we got too many novices in the pulpit. Oh, y'all ain't gonna like me right there. We got too many folk, amen, that know that they don't know nothing about structure and foundation of measure, and then they won't connect with somebody that doesn't been where they're trying to go. Ain't got nothing to do with age, baby. It got something to do with the wisdom and the maturity of somebody that God has picked out for such a time as this to take the church to a whole different dimension in the kingdom of God. But if you don't connect with folk, amen, that know how to foundation and know how to orchestrate a minister, we'll have a lot of bastards in the church, but we won't have a lot of sons and dollars that try to make. Oh, y'all ain't helping me up in that place today. Paul was a foundation layer. Paul understood what it meant to lay a strong foundation. He understood that a foundation couldn't be strong if it didn't have a strong support system. Oh, yeah, you're helping me up in here tonight. See, we got too many folk, come on somebody, in this season that don't understand, amen, the anointed of a real apostle. The church cannot go to a full capacity until we get some discernment to understand that everybody that calls themselves apostle ain't been called to be apostle. Because you've got to understand that apostle is not a caller, it's a function. It's what we do. A bishop is a caller. He said, if you desire the office of a bishop, you desire a good work. Y'all ain't gonna help me up been here today. We got so many people now that have been married five or ten times and they call it self a bishop. He said amen the qualification of a bishop that he must have one wife. So that already includes the woman from being a bishop. Y'all ain't gonna like me right there. Oh y'all ain't got quiet on me now. Y'all ain't got quiet on me now. Come on somebody. So we got too many folk that's functioning out of the wrong position. They got identity crisis. They really don't know what God have called them to do. Somebody done told you you look like a preacher. Or somebody done told you you was an apostle. Or somebody done told you you was a prophet. And you can't see nothing. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. You better quit taking these, uh, these offers lightly, baby. And don't recognize there's a devil that's a sign to every level. You better get to the point to make sure you have heard God. Because I stop by to tell you that when you call yourself a prophet or apostle, that a demon that's ready to pull you down and everybody can't handle the warfare that's coming day why let me get back in here and try to help them call them a try trying to help them tonight trying try to help them tonight tonight Paul was on his way to Damascus Road the Bible said he got knocked down didn't he, didn't he do it? Yeah. And he heard a voice when he was down. He didn't hear the voice when he was up. He heard it when he was down. See, God knock you down. You get up too quick. You don't stay to hear what he got to say. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. Sometimes you got to stay right there. Amen. And hear what God has got to say. Because when God going to say that, he going to deal with you first. He ain't going to deal with you about other folks. He going to deal with you about your, your rebellion, about your sin, and about your sloughing, and what you ain't been doing before he even give you assignment for everybody. He had to deal with Isaiah. For Isaiah couldn't stop his ministry. Isaiah said, in the day that King Asa died, I also saw the Lord sitting hot and lifted. It up. And he said, What is me? For I am a man of unclean lips. I am a man that dwell in an unclean place. And he said, Wow, here's me. Lord had to deal with him first before he can deal with God's people. You trying to deal with God's people, you ain't even clean. Unclean conversation, unclean hand, unholy, and trying to deal with God's people. You can't deal with God's people until you get clean. How you going to deal with the unclean and you ain't clean? How you going to deliver for and you still in bondage? How you going to set the cancer free and you ain't been set free yet? <laughs> 